Hello and welcome. This is uh, hello, um, joining forces to mobilize capital and drive change globally. My name is Ali Hollowell, and I'm the CEO of C sorry COO of IVPC. Uh, you may not have heard of IVPC, but you've certainly heard of our work. We are the organization that has been incubating and launching regional networks for impact capital providers around the world for the past 16 years, starting with EVPA. The esteemed panelists joining me this session represent each of those networks. Roberto Gosorgi, who you all know from EVPA in Europe, Nena Sabrawal Batra from AVPN in Asia, Frank Aswani from AVPA in Africa, and Carolina Suarez from Latin Pacto in Latin America. These four networks represent the largest collection of investors for impact in the Global South and for the Global South. This makes our consortium of networks extremely unique for its global reach, yet deep roots in the markets that most require impact capital. Our session today examines why a global approach is needed and how EVPA, ABPN, ABPA, and Latin Pacto have come together to leverage synergies across regions that provide global opportunities for their respective member communities. They'll also give us a preview of what more is to come from this powerful group. So without further ado, I'd like to kick into the questions. Can you each share a bit more about your respective networks and tell us why you see this global coordination across Asia, Africa, Latin America, and Europe as important, especially in the current climate? So I'll start with Roberta. Yes, hi Ali, thank you very much. And welcome to my fellow sister and brother network uh, to, to the table today. Um, as, um, as the audience knows, and uh, as you all know, EVPA has uh, been active over the last uh, six, uh, 16, 17 years actually uh, in Europe, uh, bringing together the ecosystem of philanthropy and investment around the concept of impact. Um, 17 years ago, this was uh, a concept that was uh, mainly widespread in, uh, in the US with the concept of venture philanthropy and um, a handful of pioneers saw the opportunity in Europe to combine, to create the same ecosystem, to build the same market, combining an input and purpose-driven approaches uh, with investment uh, practices. So EVPA brings together a broad spectrum of members, about 300 organizations that span from uh, philanthropic organization and foundation to impact fund, financial institution, corporate and sustainable uh, investment and mainstream asset managers. Um, why uh, why did we decide at this conference to set up a, um, a session like this? In Europe, about 30% of the players into the community also have an interest in investing outside Europe, um, in Africa, in Latin America, in Asia. And we know that in the world of impact, um, geographical border don't really matter. Uh, there is uh, a strong need to increase efficiency and effectiveness of investment by addressing still large um, unfunded uh, area of uh, the, the economic and societal challenges and really facilitate collaboration cross border. So we have started uh, with uh, our sister organization that are uniquely positioned, as Ali said, and equally motivated by mobilizing financial and non-financial resources for impact, we have started coming together and saying, how can we serve better this ecosystem? How can we play really a facilitator role in enabling more effective investment across borders, in facilitating peer learning and best practice sharing? I'll stop here, but that's a little bit our motivation, our need, our members need it, uh, and our role as market builder and ecosystem builder is also to increase capacity, effectiveness, efficiency, and mobilizing resources. And for that, the global lens is, is critical. Thank you. Uh, Nena, over to you. Thanks, Ali. And, you know, just so that the audience knows, Ali has spent a long time with uh, AVPN and has uh, had a big role to play in, in what I'm going to describe right now. So in the last 10 years, and you know we are going to be 10 years old in December this year, AVPN has been successful in moving, to, in, in moving capital towards impact at scale. We have more than 650 members across 33 countries um, in Asia and the globe. 
we are a convener we are a um, you know we we share insights and we move our our members towards action so in terms of our activities we run close to 100 events a year and last year our global conference attracted almost 7500 delegates making it the biggest asian social investment conference in the world so during the COVID-19 crisis, you know, since we are talking about why it's important for global coordination at this time, our members, um, AVPN members, moved more than $10 billion towards COVID-19 relief, not just in Asia, but globally. And our members tell us that their work with AVPN enables them to benchmark, to set standards, and to apply best practices. And we are very proud of the impact that a network like ours has been able to create in this continent over the last 10 years. And you know, going back to what Roberta said, what is the importance of global coordination across Asia, across Africa, LATAM, and Europe? So our mission, I believe, across all our networks is to bring more capital into the social sector and make sure that it is most effectively deployed. So leveraging a global viewpoint for knowledge sharing and collaboration are key to advance this mission. Historically, the social sector has been notoriously uncollaborative, despite some growth in multi-sector partnerships. As a result, there has been a lot of duplication in funding and in missed learning opportunities. In some parts of the global south, as we call it, governments view professional intermediaries and networks as a potential affront, leading them into being much less developed than they should be. COVID-19, however, and this, this pandemic has brought a new sense of community solidarity. And it has taught us that we have much more in common than we thought, as we have learned from the ground and from each other. In many, many markets across the global south, we have found that philanthropy has had to be mobilized to buttress government's pandemic response. Thanks to technology, we are able to use peer-to-peer -peer networks, we are able to share local knowledge, and we are able to adopt a much more inclusive approach by building more decentralized communities. The pandemic also has made it clear that local knowledge is critical in making funding decisions. And traditional approaches to philanthropy need to be recalibrated. Decision making needs to be much quicker and much more responsive to local needs. And therefore, I think this pandemic in many ways has breathed new life into the philanthropy industry when it comes to local collaboration and collaboration across networks like ours. It's also made many realize that even in the wealthiest of countries and even in the global north, there are still many who need help. Even in a country as prosperous as Singapore, which is where AVPN is headquartered, there are families who do not have the necessary equipment and technology for online learning or to work from home. And I think examples such as these have helped to highlight the work of local nonprofits and social enterprises whose work is sometimes overshadowed because they are based in a wealthy country. And networks like AVPN have been able to highlight their work. So while grant makers like AVPN, the Arab Foundation Forum, the AVPA, the Worldwide Initiatives for Grant Maker Support or WINGS, um, you know, or, or even IDPC as, um, you know, where, 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 which Ali is leading at this point, are taking a lead on building networks and supporting relevant research, there is still very much to do. And what we feel is that, you know, going forward, I think, networks like ours, collaboration like ours, can actually be a big source of support to grant makers who are looking at multiple geographies, who are to policy makers when regulatory environments need reform and they want to learn where from other geographies where this has worked, and using digital technology which can accelerate capacity development using models that have worked in Asia to, to try and replicate them in Africa or in Latin America. So I'm going to stop there. I hope that global co coordination across our sister networks will break down these silos across borders and create new and stronger links. Thank you, Nana. Well said. Um, Frank, uh, shooting over to you for your thoughts on ABPA and uh, why this global collaboration yeah. is important. Yeah. Thanks, Ali. It's always great to be in company of great women doing great work across the world. Um, uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to be here. And Roberta, thank you for hosting us. It's, it's, it's great to invite us to your home. 
uh, you know, the, in Africa, we always say it's the women who invite you to your home, not the men. Uh, so we're very happy to be to be here today. Uh, you know, um, AVPA is doing the same work um, my, my colleagues are speaking about during the respective regions. We're trying to build a network of social investors across Africa who will collaborate to increase the flow of capital for impact on the continent. Uh, so I won't spend too much time talking about that because I think you'll hear a lot more about what we're each doing uh, in our respective regions. But why is this important? Why is the collaborative across different regions important? I think the last couple of years have taught us how the world is a lot smaller than we think. The COVID crisis, for example, none of us could avoid that virus. Whether you're in China, Asia, Africa, Latin America, it moved across so much faster than we could have imagined. And and it, it, it calls for um, the realization that we, we are a lot more interconnected than we ever imagined. Uh, secondly, I think if, 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 you, if you look at, at uh, some of the opportunities that a collaboration brings to the table are immense. So, for example, Africa is probably the continent that is lagging most behind when it comes to things like SDG metrics. 2030 is coming up very close. And it's no longer just about creating social impact. It's trying to understand, can we accelerate the rate of achieving social goals in Africa? And can we do that efficiently? and at scale, and at the right speed. And one of the ways you can do that is by learning, because a lot of other continents have solved the same problem we solved in Africa, and are probably three to five years ahead of us. So a uh, case in point, I look at Southeast Asia, uh, where the demographic dividend is probably, probably hit them about five, 10 years ago. We are experiencing it in Africa right now. How do we learn so that we don't have to reinvent the wheel? And there's so much value in being deliberate about connecting to those lessons learned by others, to avoid the same mistakes, uh, make better use of the resources that you have, and be able to scale your, your solutions much faster. So this is absolutely uh, essential in, if we're going to achieve global impact uh, at scale and required speed. The other way to also think about this is, I always tell people, because of the challenges we have in Africa, Africa is an exciting place for impact. We are the sandbox for impact on the continent. And there's a lot of innovations that have been tried in, uh, on the continent and, in, and innovated on the continent because in many places in Africa as well, um, innovation precedes regulation. So if you look at things like mobile money, look at things like drone, drone technology in transporting blood and medicines, where companies like Zipline have excelled or Safaricom with mobile money, all those are global inventions today that were discovered in Africa. And if anything of the inventions can work in Africa, it will work anywhere else because it's a tough place to be. Uh, but it's an exciting place to be in the context of, of we have such exciting challenges that, uh, that attract impact investors in this part of the world. So it makes absolute sense for us to be collaborative with our sister networks, to be able to take these innovations, move them across the world as fast as possible, uh, and move, move lessons back this way where need be. And I think that way we can achieve scale, uh, impact at scale and speed so much faster than you're working alone. So Ali, I'll stop there for now. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and Carolina, final words over to you on, on this topic. Thank you, Ali. It is a pleasure to be here with, with, with you. Roberta, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations for this EVPA conference. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Porto next week with our great delegation from Latin Pact. Um, for me, it's a privilege as a Latin American to share this panel with you, to learn from you. The first time when I knew about this network, I feel, okay, is what we need in Latin America is how we connect different capital providers, is how we understand better how we can achieve impact in our region. For you that out of Latin America, we are Latin America, but for us, we're very insulated countries. We're not connected. And you have seen now, Ali, that you are based in, in Costa Rica. We're not connected at all. So we need to be more connected, but we need also to understand what is impact. We need to think out of the box and now even more now after the pandemic. Latin America is a region full of opportunities, even though we have a lot of challenges. And we have seen how the multiple efforts in equity has widened Latin America and the Caribbean. Poverty at this moment is at the highest level in the 12 years, with extreme poverty being at the highest level in the 20 years. 2020 closed with 200 million people living in poverty, which is equivalent to the Brazilian population that represents an increase of 22 million people compared to 2019. By the end of 2020, there were 28 million people in extreme poverty. 
8 million more than 2019. By 2050, around 150 million people may struggle to access water in Latin America and the Caribbean. In addition, Latin America is receiving less foreign development assistance and aid. According to the World Bank, in 2019, the region was granted almost $8 billion in official aid and assistance, less than in 2008. Not enough resources are being mobilized to respond to the different social and environmental emergency globally. So we need to bring the private investment. We need to work together. We need to see how the amount of dedicated to initiatives prioritizing social and environmental returns are assuming risk to achieve them in a scarce. We have the philanthropic capital, but we need to put together also the impact uh, capital. We need to bring how we can connect philanthropies and how we can connect with impact investors, it's how we work at our networks, building a bridge between two not opposing but rather complementary worlds. We need to understand how we can work across the continuum of capital, understanding the outputs of each uh, uh, investors. We need to work together with other regions. In Latin America, we, it's common that we always see what is happening in the US, but having this partnership with our networks in Asia, in Africa and Europe, who are connected. We bring the best practices, the best connections to improve our impact. So for me, as a Latin American, it's a privilege to be connected with our, my sister networks, to learn from them, to share with them. We are here, we, we, we are, uh, we just born a year ago. Today we have more than a hundred members, 110 members, and we are proud to be connected, to interact with these networks. We need to learn more. And we don't have an expert in social development. We are learning every day. So having IVPC, EVPA, AVPN, and ADPA is a privilege for us as a Latin American, creating a real community of investors, moving capital towards impact, as Diana mentioned. Thank you, Carolina. Um, so I wanted to shift now into some examples of how this global collaboration is already happening uh, across your networks. Um, so we'll start with uh, Nana and Frank. Um, AVPN and AVPA are currently collaborating on an Asia Africa Impact Investment Fellowship. Can you talk a little bit more about how that partnership came to be and how it's going? Sure, Ali. And you know, I'll start and hand it over to to Frank. So, you know, AVPN launched its first Impact Investing Fellowship in December 2020, and this was a cohort of asset managers and wealth owners who were looking to grow in their impact investing practice in Asia through a structured four-month learning journey. But we realized very quickly that while the regional context was important to the community building elements of the program, fundamentally, the skills that we were building could be applied anywhere. And themes like leadership in complexity, impact management, and uh, innovative finance approaches resonated globally with impact investors. And this is what led us to consider an Africa-Asia Impact Investing Fellowship. And the inaugural cohort of fellows, which uh, you know, uh, AVPA and AVPN launched together, comprises 30 individuals from Asia and 30 individuals from Africa. There is no distinction between them in the program, and they work collaboratively. The desire to exchange knowledge and build connections across continents is very clear. In the program, actually, you will find established entities like Skoll Foundation, the Acumen Fund, Ishq Tolaram Foundation, Essilor Vision Foundation, as well as Temasek Trust, the Economic Development Board of Singapore, and Magic from Malaysia. Through the AVPN and AVPA networks, we have been able to give them an access to a strong and diverse network of experts so that they can deepen their practice and ultimately increase the flow of social investment capital. So I know Frank and I are both hoping to see much more of such collaborations in the future, as there is a growing need for asset owners and capital managers to build a strong impact investment strategy, to grow their network and develop a much better understanding of the latest trends in the field. Um, I know Frank and I were just talking before we started uh, the session today, and he got some feedback from the African cohort. So I'd love to hear him share some of that with, with you. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, it's, it's funny, Ali. We and Nina, we were, uh, we we held sort of a, a midterm uh, check-in with the, with the fellows last week, and I, I was I was I kind of went in a bit cautiously, not one, not knowing what to expect, but I was pleasantly surprised at how beneficial the fellows had found the program so far. Um, they loved the case studies. They loved the fact they were interacting with people who culturally. Uh, and from a background, have very similar understanding of the problems they're all trying to solve. Uh, they love the fact that they could, they, 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 one of the things one of them mentioned is that I never thought I'd meet anyone from Indonesia. Uh, but this program has enabled me to meet someone from Indonesia. And funny enough, someone working in the same sector as I am. Uh, and I realized how similar our sectors are and the challenges we're facing. And, and, and the groups that are in, are in this uh, program, are deliberately intermixed so the africans and the asians are in similar groups and the same groups and, and it's been so uh, fantastic just to watch the cross-pollination across the different sect groups and and the feedback was very clear to me that we were onto something really special and and this is the beginning of a lot more collaborative work we need to do and we need to expand this across the global south and also look at how we can bring in I think one of the things that the fellow said is they wanted to see more uh, experienced practitioners come in to support the program. And that's where the Europeans could come in, actually, who've had a bit more experience in doing some of the stuff that the fellows are trying to learn. So, so it, 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 you know, we went into this not knowing what to expect. Um, uh, last Friday, I had to uh, really smile after the session because I thought, I thought to myself, we've done the right thing. Just by the small measure of connecting these people, we've done the right thing to the point where now the Africans, because we are keeping the Africans for a bit longer, they are saying, is there any chance we can retain the Asians to stay with us for another couple of months? That was such a good thing to hear. And, and it just tells you of the camaraderie that has been built in the class. And they don't interact that much. You know, they, they have a couple of lessons uh, a month, but it's been phenomenal to see um, just the ability to learn from each other and, and the fact that they're able to exchange different things in the process. So. Um, so the, the question of collaboration, the question of, of, of uh, connecting to each other is just not seen at this particular level, but even down to the practitioners and the people on the ground who are actually trying to drive the change. This is super important. And, you know, I'll, I'll add one more thing here before I hand it back to you, Ali. I think one of the things that is remarkable about networks like ours and the collaboration that we are able to drive is that, you know, there, this happens very, very quickly. If you know, you know, anybody who's tried to partner or collaborate, it's a very hard process. It usually ends up, you know, taking much longer than it should. But I think both Frank and I can, you know, provide a really good evidence to the fact that, you know, it was a good idea. We discussed it. We found someone to help support this initiative and we just went with it. And I think that is one of the hallmarks of our sister networks where we are able to collaborate quickly, we're able to pivot quickly, and we're able to create communities that will outlast, you know, whatever program that they are on. And I think that's, that's the real impact that we are building, a community of investors who put impact front and center, who are looking at problems on a global scale. I mean, that to me is priceless. And that is what we are able to do together. Absolutely. Um, and I know that also Carolina wants to build in. I think the um, also the idea that uh, Frank mentioned, I think this is where the sister organization like the Four Network can come uh, together very quickly with the access to our community because the passion and the interest in sharing and giving back the experience is very strong. We heard it also this morning in a couple of sessions, right? At uh, both from the social enterprise side and from the investor side. So even pushing the idea for, forward to ideas of secondment and rotation, we know that talent and capabilities is one of the key bottlenecks that all regions worldwide face in considering the scale up of of impact and enterprises so can we consider a cross regional secondment and rotations and uh, and joint the community sharing session i think we have started already we can tell a little bit more we started already with the cross regional sharing session but i think we could do more yes i could agree um, actually yeah. what what we offer to 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 our investor is that we are connected but we have a clear understanding of what is happening in each region. 
So it is available. Um, it is a value added for our members because what happened? We don't have a unique, you know, headquarters located in New York or Geneva or in another place. We have offices in each region, Asia. Uh, you China. Ha, uh, you have more than three offices in China, India, Singapore. You as well in Europe, in Africa. We have in Mexico, Brazil, Colombia, and in, in next year opening in Central America and the Southern Corn. So we understand the, the ground. We understand the context. And what we do is how we can connect in a more impactful way our impact investors. So for me, I hope that we can be part of the this fellowship that Nina and Fran were presenting, how we can connect the Global South, but also working with EVPA and EVPN and EVPN in the corporate social initiatives. We have seen how different corporates are interested to be more connected, to understand how they can create a more, a, a more strategic impact. So we are connected to improve these connections and understanding always what is happening in the ground. It is our value added. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. And I and it's so what I love about this group and, and this examples you're giving all of this is it was almost like you designed it for a pandemic. Um, but in, but it was it was all the pieces were there. And so we were able to take advantage of remote learning this trend and, and people not being able to travel, but desperately wanting that human connection with each other again. Um, so it's really amazing to see that coming together. Um, Roberta and Carolina, shifting to you both now, and I understand that Latin Pacto and EVPA have been collaborating uh, to share insights from Europe with Latin America and doing some translations um, of the work um, in Spanish and Portuguese. Um, can you share a bit more about this partnership and what's been the reception of this cross-border knowledge sharing? Yeah, sure. Actually, when we started, we started from, from, zero, from zero here in Latin America, but having the advantage to have all the knowledge and connection from our sister networks. So we started to say, okay, we have the knowledge already. So we started to, to translate it into Spanish and Portuguese. They are the two languages that we use here in Latin America, plus the English in the Caribbean. So we started to translate the most important translation. Actually, the, the latest one was in a, one publication from AVPN about intermediaries in corporates. So right now we have a library of publications in, in our own language. And it's not only a translation, it's how we can adapt to the context in Latin America, how we can understand this context and how we can understand what is happening in our region. So we started with an academia, with our knowledge center, bringing the courses, bringing the best for our sister networks to our region, understanding the reality of our region. It's not just replicating and say, okay, this is the translation. No, it's how we can understand the needs and the interests from our members, from the community of investors here in Latin America. So it's how we started to, to work together. The pandemic was a, an opportunity for us to be connected, to use Zoom in a more strategic way, to use all these technological um, platforms. It's because we are now connected. And I'm happy to see Roberta next week for the first time in person. But I'm sure that during this time, I have learned a lot from her um, from her colleagues at AVPN. They are very open, as well as IVPN, AVPA. We're always connected, learning, exchanging ideas, how we can improve this, how we can create that. And you, Naala Ali, you are doing an extraordinary job right now because you are bringing the best from Asia to Latin America. So we are so happy to be connected, to improve these connections. And the most important is that our members receive these benefits. We work for our members. It is the way that we, how we can improve impact. We are not developing projects by ourselves. We work for our members. They can improve impact and they can use us all the time. Yeah, well said, Carolina. And I think I would uh, just add as another example, the work we've been doing together in developing and in onboarding members uh, to our joint community. And this is with Latin Pato, but also more and more also with, uh, with ADPN, where uh, as member serving organization, we have really been joining forces to develop partnership and join the dots across regions. So not just onboarding new members, but trying to say, okay, 
who can be a good ally and a partner in mobilizing resources for impact? How can we therefore go there with a proposition and um, with uh, an a lens that is global on the challenges, but at the same time with the access to the local communities? So together with Carolina, we have onboarded several new members uh, that had an interest in both Europe and Latin America. With the VPN and Latin Pacto, we have currently also now a handful of members that are interested in a global type of support and we're working for the first time for the four of us to on on a global proposition that we are not ready to unveil but that's kind of bring us brought us closer in discussing okay where, where do we bring the global lens and where do we go away and work at the regional level with our local communities so a lot a lot is happening on the ground and as carolina said just for the benefit of our members and of the ecosystem so our that's where our starting point how can we increase the efficiency and effectiveness of our communities great thank you both um and so um a final question here before we go over to uh the audience and ask some questions um, so as the momentum behind investing for impact accelerates globally, what is the role that our networks can play to facilitate capital flows across regions? And why are you or we uh, uniquely positioned to achieve that? Um, I'll let you choose who wants to take that first. I'll go. No worries. Uh, so, you know, we have we have less than a decade to achieve the SDGs. And as, as Carolina said so, um, you know, so um, evocatively, the pandemic has moved us so much farther away from our targets. And we need to translate this urgency into action. And collaboration, in my opinion, is probably the only way forward in making this happen. And, you know, I, as I said in the beginning of this session, at AVPN, we want to celebrate the last 10 years of impact that we've created in Asia and map out how to move capital towards impact to what we are calling the Asian decade of social investment. And you know, we see this as a unique opportunity to bring all of us together. You know, um, we have the G20, which has happened in Italy this year. It's going to be in November next year in Indonesia. And AVPN has just been confirmed as the, Indonesian's gov the Indonesian government's impact partner for the side events alongside the main agenda. So for us, these are opportunities to highlight how we can work collaboratively as one group across different areas of need. Connecting resource providers to areas of greatest unmet needs will translate into a movement of capital towards impact where it is needed the most, which we, all four of us, as an ecosystem, do best. So I think it's crucial that we all work together in order to build a much more inclusive and equal world. The time is now. And I believe that with the four networks here, we have the will and we have the ability to do this. I completely agree with, with Naina. We have the, the capacity to bring together different capital providers. I think it's one of the value added that we also offer to our networks is how we can bring grant making foundations, how we can bring impact funds, family offices, other private investors such as private equity and venture capital funds, service providers, the academia, corporations, of course, the, the government and multilateral agency, and other networks. We don't want to compete with any other player in, in our region. We want to complement these efforts. Our mission is how we can move capital towards impact is how our investors and philanthropists can deploy in a more strategic way the resources. So it is the way that we can connect them. It is the way how we understand how we will achieve the SDGs. It's only 10 years to achieve the SDGs. And we need to work together all these capital providers. We need to, be, we need to work together with other regions, not only with our, re, our own region. So it's how it's, it is the value added that we're offering with these networks, being connected learning from each other, improving our knowledge, improving the connections. Yeah, and, and I think as, as you feel, as you think about just what Carolina and Nena have spoken about collaboration, 
um, the quality of collaboration is so important here because yesterday's solutions cannot solve today's problems. And the, uh, um, if I take Africa um, case in point, we've tried to solve our problems for the last so many years with aid. Aid is now declining. And uh, we frankly are struggling to see how we're gonna finance our SDGs between now and 2030. But this is where also we learn from other regions. We are able to challenge previous mindsets. The very nature of our networks that brings together investors across the continuum from deploying grants debt to equity is about developing a new approach towards solving this financing challenge that the world is facing for impact. Uh, this is something unique that not anyone else is doing, where you on the same networks and platforms, you'll find deployers of grants debt and equity because the solution is in how you blend the skills and this, those different types of capital together and not uh, do the traditional um, format of only using either grants or private capital uh, on its own. So I think it's about also looking at the innovation we're bringing into this table and the enabling environment and spaces where we are facilitating to be created. And, and we are enabling all of these players to learn in the process. So all these programs that you're speaking, you've had being mentioned here, are all about trying to find new approaches. Uh, and Carolina said, there's no expert on the future. Uh, and this future requires a different approach. And you know, when I talk to Africans here who are trying to solve this problem, they're overwhelmed by the problems we have. They realize we need to do something different, but they just don't know what to do. So we see a huge space and opportunity for us to, to play in improving the capabilities of the social sector and the social investors. So uh, all this capacity building program that we're running, our ability to, to connect uh, these investors together is all about enabling and catalyzing change at speed and scale. So, so we, we, we're, very, we're very happy to be on the front line of this new movement and this new way of thinking. And, uh, you know, we really count on uh, having as many of you work with us through this process. Well, I, I think uh, I don't want to repeat what uh, my colleague said. I think uh, for me, the collaboration, despite the narrative, is still very, very difficult um, across across the world. I mean, it's difficult in regional context. Imagine cross border, right? So, uh, the I think the the focus on building capacity in terms of uh, um, increasing entrepreneurial skills, so going from the entrepreneurial and innovative skills and business skills on one side to generate the pipeline of brave and bold entrepreneurs that uh, put the societal challenges at, at the center. That's probably the starting point in some environment to uh, counteract the mindset of reliance on foreign aid or public funding that like the, the, the deus ex machina that comes and solves uh, the, 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 the social challenges. So that's one area. The second area is really uh, a capacity building in the area of blended finance and uh, blended finance tool. I mean, to bring different capital to the table is the answer. It takes still too long. I mean, the latest the social impact bond that was launched in France for, on social housing took two years to structure and okay it was a very ambitious project with lots of stakeholders but still two years is a long time to invest in structuring um, uh, a, a deal in blended finance and thirdly um, the policy side right I think it's very important to uh, to see what role can network like ours play in accelerating policy intervention that create more enabling framework because at the end of the day in many cases cross border uh, cross border co-funding is also prevented by regulatory constraints and and barriers so what can we do to really leverage the learning from one geographical area to the other and support policymakers to remove those barriers rather than creating more hurdles. So I think uh, in terms of the narrative uh, uh, is clear collaboration and cross-border movement of resources. I think we will, we'll have to roll up our sleeve and bring the debate to a level down in terms of saying, okay, how do we unlock it? Where do we start from? Uh, how do we innovate financial instrument? How do we make sure that we start investing also on building a pipeline of uh, uh, and social enterprises and, and deals? 
that can be funded uh, that have in mind the societal challenges to address. Thank you, Roberta. Um, and so now um, I'd love to ask the audience for uh, some questions. I see one just came in. Um, so this says, uh, yesterday's solutions cannot solve today's problems, which is what Frank uh, had quoted earlier. Um, and is, is, the, is as true for Europe as others. Um, selfishly, how can we ensure learnings come from new geographies back to Europe? That's a great question. Um, so I, I'll go first. Uh, I presume the, the new geographies include Africa, Asia, and Latin America. <laughs> so I, as, as I said before, um, what new geographies offer is a diversity of challenges. And you know, in human-centered design thinking, they say you need to test your, your solutions with extreme users. And what new geographies offer as extreme users, difficult places to solve. If you can solve a water problem in rural Africa, that solution can be applied anywhere in the world. So creatively using these new geographies as your centers of innovation, and then creatively thinking about how you will especially deploy high-risk capital and more specifically philanthropy into these more risky initiatives where private capital will not on its own go. is another really creative way I think we could do. First of all, it's cheap to do this stuff in Africa. The dollar goes a long way. But also, we need to think creatively, as Nena keeps saying, what is the, 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 uh, the reconfiguration of the role philanthropy plays in, in driving impact? Philanthropy needs to think about taking more risk, testing out more new models, new services. And this is where I think this can be done in a more collaborative nature. Then it to be done at the same time. But if philanthropy can give us more solutions that get to the point of proof of concept, then it's so much easier for full-on private capital to, 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 to piggyback on that and take those solutions to commercial scale and a more sustainable uh, measure for me in my case. So, so I, I think we need to see the world as, an, as, an, as a connected ecosystem where, where there's still problems that need to be solved in, in, in the new geographies but that could, uh, in essence, provide very scalable solutions and could be tested so much cheaply, innovated so much faster and quicker. Uh, as they say, it's fail fast, fail cheap, fail quickly. And, and that can be transferred to the rest of the world so much more efficiently. So as an impact player, I think if you're looking to have global impact, think about how the different regions can play to your strategic uh, priorities and how you want to use them creatively. Um, I'm going to add something to what Frank said. You know, I agree with everything he said. But um, I think it's important for more established geographies or more established players to open up their table and invite the newer players in. A lot of times, and you know, this is this is a bit controversial, but it's it's something that I feel very strongly about. A lot of times, I mean, you know, Roberta, firstly, thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together. Very few um, organizations, very few uh, settings in established geographies like Europe, like the United States, actually have African, Asian or Latin American voices that are present. You talked about uh, a, a social impact bond in France that took two, that took four, two years to, to, be, to be structured. Well, there was one that was launched in India just earlier this month, which was structured in less than a year. And it's one of the largest uh, ones on skill development for youth, which was done by the British Asian Trust based out of London, but with the National Skills Development Commission in India. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's as Frank said, we, we pivot quickly, we fail fast, the cost of failure is much less. We don't have institutions or, you know, established ways of doing things that kind of hold us back. And, and, you know, for Asians, and I'll, I'll say this shamelessly, we copy very well. We copy, we tweak it to what works for us, and we roll it out really quickly. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what you do. We'll take a picture. We'll take it back home. We'll make it at half the cost, and, and we'll launch it in the market. And, and that's what works for us, right? So, you know, it's, it's, but it's important. And, you know, Peter, I think what you've said is something which is very valid. How do we, how do we bring some of those learnings back to more institutional, back to more established players. Well, 
you clap with both hands, right? The established players also have to let us in. It can't be that we are the token voice on the table. It can't be that models only come from the north to the global south, especially not when most models haven't worked in the global north. You know, it's very easy for you to come and tell us this is a model for climate change or this is a model for sustainability when it hasn't really worked. You know, and you're, you're expecting our geographies, our economies, which are much newer. And, you know, we have, as, as, as Frank said, we have younger populations. We have different kinds of things that we are grappling with. So listen to our voices, get us on the table. And, you know, that's the way the, the conversation and the dialogue will flow both ways. I fully agree with Nine and Frank, and actually our regions, I, I always mention that Latin America, but I'm sure Asia, Africa as well, are, are regions full of opportunities with a lot of innovations to be improved. So it's bringing not only the models, it's adapted to the context and how we can improve. And the value added that we offer to the European investors is how we can connect with the most relevant investors here in the region, how they can understand the context. It's not only bringing to say, okay, I have, the, I have the solution for Latin America, no, no. You don't have the solution for any other place. You need to understand the context. And we are here. We are here on the ground. We are here to, not only the team that we have in our own networks, it's also how we can connect with the most relevant investors in the region. Great. I don't think I have to add uh, anything. I think it's uh, maybe we can take this as a sort of a call to action to yes. to at least become more proactive in ensuring that uh, there is a global dialogue around certain issues um, and take it a little bit upon ourselves as a market builders to to try to reverse the flow or at least to keep the flow open both ways right there is uh, there is a lot that can be copied and exported but there is a lot that can be reversed engineered uh, back to back to europe or even to the us i mean nobody has solved honestly the the key challenges we don't have a us network not yet but <laughs> Maybe at some point they will need one too. So, uh, <laughs> Ali, do you, oh, sorry, I just jumped in. No, 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 please. That, that was great. Thank you. Um, so we have a quiet audience right now that are not asking other questions. Um, so um, I have another question for you guys. And then I also wanted to maybe pose this to the audience um, who can put this in the chat or I'm happy to give uh rights to you know to anybody that wants to to speak as well it's a nice feature of this platform that i can i can spotlight someone in the audience if they're interested um but i'm curious of what you all see as what's next you know what are the priorities um for you in terms of uh leveraging this consortium of networks this global reach but with deep um local um connectivity um what you know are we expecting more fellowships are we expecting um you know cross-border learnings what what's what's a priority for each of you um as we look ahead for me i think it's being more connected improving these connections interact with not only us because i think we have a, a, a um green teams in our own networks so it's how our teams could be more connected how we can improve this connection with the fellowships with for example with the delegation that will be in europe next week is how we can understand that we're living the same promise. We are sharing the same promise. Right now, we don't have any nation saying, okay, I'm ready. I feel the SDGs, I'm ready. I don't, I don't have any problem in, in a region. I think that all countries across the world have problems and we need to learn from others. We need to be more connected and is how we can improve this connection with our next. So I think that being you at IBPC Ali, it could be extremely useful because you will be fully dedicated to to connect ourselves, you know, to to find these synergies among us to say, okay, here you can connect. We have a big challenge with the social corporate initiative, and we will start to work hard uh, with EVPA and, EV, and with the, with the, with the, the four networks. Also working on climate action, I think it's an issue that we need to to improve um, in a collective way. Gender issues, I think, it's also an issue that is common to our our networks. Is how we can improve. Um, uh, impact in gender with gender lens. So it's there are multiple issues, but the most important is that we are willingness to collaborate among us, that we are ready 
that we have the, the, the initiative, that we have the passion to do the best, to improve these connections and to improve this knowledge and bringing together the best practitioner, practitioners across the world. Because it's, it's, it's something that, that we have reiterate all the time. We connect practitioners, the ones that are working in the field. So, um, you know, I, I think just moving it away from the four RMAs, the four regional associations that are present here. I mean, I think all of us will agree that infrastructure organizations like ours, networks like ours, find it very hard in order to get resources and in order to really sort of grow uh, their footprint. Um, at, the, at the same time, we have a lot of uh, network organizations that actually uh, sprout up in, in across the globe. What I really feel is that, you know, it's really important to focus on infrastructure organizations like us because we do connect, you know, what where where funding is needed with funders. We connect funders to one another. We connect um, uh, different communities. We build communities. And by allowing collaborations such as the one that you have represented here today, um, it is the sector as a whole that benefits. So, you know, really looking at how can we collaborate with each other? How do we connect with each other? And not just because we share, you know, common genetic language or we share the same founder. Even if you look at other networks, I think it's, it's important on all of us to see how do we work much more closely with other networks. Because we are actually at this point working on very, very scarce resources. A lot of funders want to fund projects. They want to fund you know, um, sort of end outputs on the ground rather than looking at how do you build a framework where some of this can actually be multiplied, where the impact can be leveraged and, you know, grown several times over, which can only happen if there are network organizations, if there is an infrastructure creating organization like us. So I think, you know, us coming together is a really good sign that other networks, other kinds of infrastructure builders can also come together and partner together so that we don't unnecessarily replicate the work that we are doing. We don't, you know, fracture the field. I mean, you know, every time someone comes to Asia and they want to set up yet another network, I kind of try to explain to them, you know, Carolina, you told that you were talking about us having three offices. We're actually present in 12 countries in Asia. We have a team of 75. Use us use the network that we have built over four years to get to you know get to your goals at the end of the day all of us share the same goal how do we multiply impact so i think you know seeing our collaboration i think is something that is very much needed in the sector especially when resources are scarce yeah and, and ali ali I, if if i uh, if i if i speak also just picking Picking up on what uh, Nain and Karin, Carolina have spoken about, uh, we are running out of time to create the change we require. We are running out of time and resources, and we've got to be constructively impatient uh, to do what we need to do uh, to hit our targets. And that means we've got to try and find ways to innovate where we can achieve as much as possible with as little of the resources used as we, as we can. We don't have an, an ever-flowing abundance of resources across the world. And I think if there's anything we can learn from each other, whether it's this network or other networks, that helps us become more efficient, that helps us become more constructive, uh, that's something we'll be happy to embrace. But it's so much easier for us because we sit around the dinner table every evening uh, as a family uh, to be able to do that. But uh, but I, I, I want to echo Nina's words. We are not... Uh, we're very open to working with other networks, and we do that in, in, our, in our respective regions um, because the problems we're trying to solve are so much bigger than any of us can solve on our own. Uh, and, and it's so important for us to have that open mind to welcome uh, uh, underlying with people who have a similar vision to ours. Ali, I also see that we have a question from, from Eva about uh, can we see ourselves to provide service to each other? Maybe I'll use this to consider we are running out of time and I know the, the call is going to think to to kind of wrap up what we said. Um, can we consider offering services? Absolutely. That's what we are doing in developing partnership and facilitating access uh, to 
other networks uh, to deliver impact. So what we are trying to do with Carolina Nina and Frank is uh, to move above this concept of my network, my member, your network, your member, but kind of come together to say, we have societal issues, challenges, whether it's start from climate, from social inclusion, from water and sanitation, and saying, if that's impact, how we have, we sit on a pool of resources so that come from across the spectrum, and it's just a matter of being facilitator and facilitating access to address the right the right challenges. So absolutely, yes, we can. And what what's next? I I see really kind of our collaboration um, is at early stage. I think there is way more that uh, that can be done, and I see the next year coming, like really continuing this journey of connection of sharing but i would kind of i want to go back to what we said in terms of our call to action maybe we can put a bit of spotlight on innovative solutions kind of trying to be really a facilitator and accelerator of bringing investors uh, across regions to identify solutions that uh, have not that can be either prototype in one area and just as you said, quickly try, quickly fail, or scale up, and um, and the kind of facilitate that uh, reverse engineering and leapfrogging that uh, works very well in certain situations. So that would be that would be my uh, my message to to to, to wrap up. Sorry, I was trying to unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you, Roberta. And and so I'll just say, you know, a, a final couple words here because we're we're nearly out of time. But I wanted to sum up what I'm hearing. And despite being given homework <laughs> from from you all on uh, what IVPC needs to do to help kind of accelerate uh, this sharing and this um, this coordination across our four networks, um, I'm also hearing that there needs to be a major focus on innovation and innovation going both ways um, so that uh, not only the Global South is learning from each other, but also the Global South is sharing um, some innovation with the Global North, um, with our with our partners in Europe. Um, and then I think the the biggest thing that I'm hearing is the the urgency um, and, and the need to expand the tent, bring more groups um, into what we're um, what we're trying to do, and uh, that there's there's too big of a problem um, for any one of us to solve, um, and we we need each other, and we need the organizations that are also working similarly on the same problems. Um, it's not you know it it often feels like competition, as Nana said, with with scarce resources. Um, but I think that uh, as you all so rightly said, you know that the need to collaborate is there, and that's the only way. Um, that will be able to solve some of these challenges um, and help our members to be able to move that capital more effectively to learn from one another um, and to really get the capital in the hands of the organizations that need it most at this critical time. Um, so thank you to all of you for your wonderful contributions. Um, I am very lucky to get to work with all of you every day and I hope that the um, panel or the uh, the audience here also got a taste of what that's like. Um, so please uh, do reach out to all of us um, if you're interested in learning more about each of the networks and how you can get involved um, from Europe, since most of our audience is based in Europe today, um, how you can get involved um, with these other partners in the Global South. So thank you again, Roberta, for hosting thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you, Ali, for moderating. Everyone. And thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.